All right, welcome back. This is Mr. Selvin. Today we're going to be studying more about quadratics. Today it's going to be called vertex form. Look at this yoga move that's pretty impressive. It forms a parabola pretty much kind of right there. So let's talk a little bit about vertex form. The first thing you need to understand is vertex form is this right here. Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K. Now A can't be zero because if it's zero, all of this goes away and it's just Y equals a number. Okay, just like last time, the graph's going to be parabola, which means it's a U-shape, it's curved, it's not straight, it has, it has symmetry, just like all the stuff we learned last time. Same parent function, x squared, all that fun stuff. So let's take a look at some of these and determine out some really cool things. All right, so right now I have these two, I have, um, these two equations. This is our basic one. This is just me rewriting y equals x squared really fancy. All right, I wrote it in vertex form. Now I want to make some changes. All right, the first change I want to do is let's say I change my uh, zero inside to three. What happens when I change it to three? Well, it says x minus three. X minus three, you would think would change it to the left or negative, but it went to the right. That's the opposite what I would what I would have thought. Right? Let's change it to plus four. When I change it to plus 4, here's our basic one, plus 4 did exactly the opposite again. It moved my vertex from the right to the left. Very interesting. All right, so let's change that back. So it looks like whatever I do here, it becomes the opposite of what you think, and it's an X move. So inside, X and opposite. Let's see what happens when I change the outside. Say I change the opposite to outside of 4, it went up 4 units. What happens if I change it to a negative 3? It goes down 3 units. This is more intuitive, isn't it? Whatever it is on the outside, it's up and down, up and down, up and down. All right? So let's say I have uh, that back at 0. Let's see what else other changes we could have. All right. So I have A is 1. Well, that's positive. What if I had it as negative 1? Ah, negative 1 means it flips upside down. So when I have a negative number here, it's going to be upside down, all right? Let's talk about what happens when I make this number a little bit bigger than 1. Maybe I make it 2. Ah, when I made this bigger, this number got bigger, the, it actually got narrower on the inside. Let's try it again. Let's make it 5, even narrower. Let's make it 10, even narrower. So the bigger this number becomes, the narrower it is, all right? In fact, we could always compare two things. Let's say I have this one is four and this one is seven. I know that this graph is bigger, the A value is bigger, so it's going to be narrower. This is our red function, yep, the red function is narrower. The smaller of these two numbers, absolute value-wise, is always gonna be narrower. All right, let's take that back. Uh, what happens if I make it a small number, like a fraction, like 0.3? Ooh, when I go under 1, it gets wider than our parent function, right? That makes sense. The smaller this, no the smaller this number is, the wider it becomes. So if I know that this is 0.3 and I know that this is 0.5, this number is smaller, therefore it will be wider than our other graph. Cool. All right, so let's summarize that. So we notice a few things. First of all, our vertex, we notice that the opposite of h is our, is our x value, right? So if I had x minus 2 squared plus 7, my vertex would be the opposite of that, or positive 2 and 7. We know that when a is greater than 0, a is greater than 0, it means it's positive, it's going to open up, right? which means it'll have a minimum value. When A is less than zero, it's going to do what? Open down, and it'll have a maximum value, right? Very cool. We talked about this, the absolute value. The reason I include the absolute value because it works whether it's opening up or down, all right? But when it's bigger than one, the bigger this number is, it's going to get narrower, right? The bigger the number, the narrower or skinnier it gets. Likewise, the smaller the number, the wider it gets. Okay, let's graph one and check it out. All right, let's do everything we can right here. 
Um, let's find the vertex. So our x value of the vertex is the opposite of this, which is negative 3. Our y value is exactly what is on the outside, negative 4. Um, so 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And if you remember, the axis of symmetry, because these parabolas are symmetric, always runs through the x-coordinate of that. So that's x is negative 3. We know that A is positive 1, therefore it's going to have a minimum value because it's going to open up. All right, let's put this in standard form. So Y equals X plus 3 times X plus 3. I'm going to do this one, but the other ones you can be able to do by your, you should be able to do by yourself. X times X, X squared, 3X plus 3X plus 9 minus 4. So we're going to get y equals x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 4 is 5. And why is it great to have this in standard form? Because we know our y-intercept. When x is 0, I plug 0. That cancels that. 0 times 6 is 0. Our x-coordinate would be 5. So let's plot that point. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's one point right there. All right, let's find some other points. So we know our vertex is negative 3, negative 4. Let's find the next point. When the, let's find negative 4, when x is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 3 squared is negative 1. Negative 1 squared minus 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Let's go to the next one. Neg negative 5. Negative 5 squared uh, plus 3 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. And last but not least, let's do one more. Negative 6. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3 squared. Negative 3 squared is 9 minus 4, which is 5. So we have negative 4 down 1, 2, 3. We have negative 5 down 0. And we have negative 4, uh, negative 6, excuse me, and up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And look at that. We have our symmetry right there. We can put our symmetry down here. And again, and bada bing, we have our graph. Okay? Now here's a very cool thing. We're not going to have to make these tables ever again. We're going to do something called the 135 rule. The 135 rule is this. Essentially, when I go over one x value, my y values follow a very particular pattern. The negative 4 to negative 3, that went up 1. Negative 3 to 0, that went up 3. 0 to 5, that went up 5. 1, 3, 5. So if you take a look at this, let's try and graph this one. We know our vertex, negative 6, the opposite of that, positive 2. It's negative, right? So it's going to open down, which means it is a maximum value. So negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down and up 2. All right, we also know that is our axis of symmetry, so that is going to be x equals negative 6. We can multiply this out. And that's going to give us... Now we have to distribute this negative, so negative x squared minus 12x minus 36 which will be y equals negative x squared um, minus 12x minus 34. Sorry about that. All right. And that means our y value when x is 0, 0, 0, negative 34. Now we can't graph that one, but if we could, if it was on the graph, that'd be good to graph. All right, so let's try our 1, 3, 5 rule. Remember, that means I'm going to go over 1, up 1. Over 1, up 3, and over 1, up 5. But we know this should open down, so should I go up? No, in fact, I have to multiply this by my a. So negative 1. So now I'm going to go up 1, or over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 3. Over 1, down 5. Over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1, 2, 3. Over 1, down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And get my symmetric points.
just like that. Oh, that's not a bad graph at all, Mr. Sullivan. All right. Very cool. Let's try another one. Let's find our vertex. So we have the opposite of this is 4. Exactly the outside is our y value, 4, 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Great. All right, our, is this our max or min? It's negative, so it's going to open down, so this is going to be a max. Our axis of symmetry is x equals our x coordinate of our vertex, so it's at 4. All right, let's put this in standard form. So negative 2 times x minus 4 squared plus 8. All right, if you did that out, you would get negative 2x squared plus 16x minus 24. If you still need help with double distribution, just let us know, all right? But that's one of those things we assume you know how to do now. And that means our y-intercept is x is 0 y is negative 24. So I can't really graph that point. All right, so let's remember, I have my 1, 3, 5 rule, and I'm going to multiply it by my a value, which is negative 2. So I'm going to do negative 2, negative 6, negative 10. So over 1, down 2. Over 1, down 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Over 1, down 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And make them symmetric. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 1, 2. Over 1. Good. Remember, these parabolas are U-shaped. I know they're not easy to draw like lines where you could get something out and actually draw it perfectly. But, ooh, sorry. I'm sure it's easier for what you have than what I'm using. And there we have it, our 135 rule. All right, I want you to pause the video, pause, and try this one all on your own. All right, first thing, our vertex, the opposite of five is negative five. Our y value, negative three, negative five down three. This is definitely a minimum value because A is positive, so it opens up. Our axis of symmetry is x is negative 5. Multiply all this out, and our standard form is 0.5x squared plus 5x plus 9.5. Our y-intercept, 0, 0, 9.5. Great. So let's check this out. 1, 3, 5. I'm going to multiply it by a, which is 1 half. So this is 1 half, 3 halves, 5 halves. So I'm counting halves. I go over 1, up one half. There you go. Now I'm doing three halves. Over one, up one half. Two halves, three halves. Now I'm going to do five halves. Over one, up one, two, three, four, five halves. And then I end my symmetric, and I'm good to go. All right, example five. Now we're going to do it backwards. So we're going to write the equation of this. So I know my normal equation is some value of a times x minus h squared plus k. So let's find our vertex. Um, h, remember I had the opposite of h. So this is a positive 5, so I need it to be a negative 5 squared. My k value is my y value, which is 3. All right, normally I have 1, 3, 5 rule. Let's see what I have here. I went over 1, up 2. Over 1, up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So it's not my 1, 3, 5. That means A is not 1. What did I multiply? 1 by to get 2 and 3 by to get 6. I multiplied it by 2. That means I'm going to multiply everything here by 2. And my equation would be Y equals 2 times X minus 5 squared plus 3. All right? And as you can see here, I've already gotten these answers. Ha <laughs> ha. So, the question is, let's compare these graphs. So, let's compare the graphs, but even though the answers are already written out here. The first thing I want you to look at is A. A is negative 1 here, right? And negative 1 and 2. Remember, we're always talking about the absolute value. So, between these graphs, this graph has a smaller A. A is 1. A is 2. 
right? Therefore, this graph, the smaller it is, the wider it will be. So this graph will be wider. Also, since this is negative, this is going to be opening down. Boom. What else do we know about this graph in comparison to that graph? Without even graphing it, what do we know? Well, we know the x coordinate is going to be a little bit different. Instead of it going to the right, it's going to go to the left 3. Instead of it going up four, up 3, it's going to go up 4, right? Not much else is different. All right, it's that's what it is. So, good luck on this section. I hope you do really well. And don't forget, go out in that world and be the change.